are calling to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Monday, January 4th, 2021. I know everyone happy, is happy to say 2021 and hope for a much better year this year than we had in the last. As a preliminary matter, this is John Hurd, Select Board Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Before I do so, I'll note that Select Board man, member Curro is not feeling well tonight, so he will not be joining us. So members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes, thank you. Steve Corsi? Yes. Len Diggins? Yes. And staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. Doug Heim? Yes. And Board Administrator Ashley Marr is participating remotely. Good evening. This meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth given the outbreak of the novel coronavirus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus and reduce risk of COVID-19 illness, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will feature public comment even if members of the public do not provide comment, participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. For this meeting, the select board is convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please also take care to adjust your screen or device name if you would like to speak. In order for us to recognize speakers appropriately and develop accurate minutes, it is helpful for our participants to see your full first and last name when calling upon you rather than a nickname. All of the meeting materials for this meeting except any executive session materials are available on the Novus Agenda Dashboard. We recommend that members and the public follow the agenda as posted on Novus unless the chair notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on our agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members, inviting each by name to provide any comments, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. This meeting will feature opportunities for the public comment on certain agenda items. For comment on a public comment, after members have spoken, I as the chair will afford public comment opportunities as follows. I'll first ask members of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once the chair has a list of all public commentators, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Please keep in mind that all participants and members of the public must be recognized by the chair before speaking. Finally, each vote taken tonight will be a roll call vote. All right, and that takes us to our consent agenda. We have meeting, meeting of minutes, December 21st, 2020. Meeting of minutes, September 21st, 2020. Joint meeting with the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Meeting of minutes, December 9th, 2020. Joint meeting with the Arlington Housing Authority. And for approval, Arlington Public Art Youth Banner Initiative on Massachusetts Avenue in Arlington Center, April 1st, 2021 to July 1st, 2021. Adria Arch Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture. Sure. And Mr. Corsi? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I have a, a comment on number five. So I'm going to move approval of items two through four, but I'd ask that number five be removed from the consent agenda. Um, 
Mrs. Mahan? Second. Uh, Mr. Dickens, any comments? No comments, thank you. All right, Attorney Head? Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. It's unanimous vote. All right, so that takes us separately to item number five for approval of Arlington Public Art Youth Banner Initiative on Massachusetts Avenue in Arlington Center, April 1st, 2020 to July 1st, 2021. Mr. DeCourcy? Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I'm going to move approval. My concern in this was the time frame that was listed in the application. It's it's listed as a, a request from April through July 1st, April 1 through July 1. And I'm concerned about the month of June, um, both in terms of Pride Month and also last year we um, hung banners in Arlington Center um, and throughout the town because of the Arlington High School graduation. And, and that may be the case again this year. So at least for purposes of this approval, I'm concerned about um, approving these banners for the month of June. So I'd like to move approval for the period of April through May 31st, and we can revisit it later if we need be, but I, I, I feel more comfortable at that time frame. Okay. It doesn't look like we, I don't see Adria on the list and I don't know if anyone else was presenting for them. So I will turn to the board, Mrs. Mahan. Um, I'd like to second that, and I, I would just note in um, the application for the temporary banner for the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture, um, they indicate that the Youth Banner Initiative event dates are April to May. Um, so I think Mr. DeCourcy's motion, which I do second, um, to have the banner from April 1st to May 31st. Are there 31 days in May, 30 or 31? I would definitely second that. I'd answer you, but I couldn't be 100% sure. Mr. Dickens. 100% sure. There are 31 days in May, and then I'm fine. I'm fine with this. Yep. All right. So we have a motion by Mr. Corsi for approval, second by Mrs. Mahan with the amended dates through May 31st, 2021. Attorney Hyde. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Thank you. All right, so that takes us to licenses and permits for approval, food vendor license, Mariucci Japanese Food in Delhi, 1398 Massachusetts Avenue, Joshua Nakama. And I do see Mr. Nakama with us. Sorry. Uh, can you can you hear me? Yes, we can. And I hey. apologize if I mispronounce the name of the business. <laughs> Not at all. So if you could just tell, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about your business that you're looking to open. Hi, yeah, my name is Joshua Nakama. I'm the manager with uh, Fuji Mart Corporation doing business as Maruichi Japanese Food in Delhi. Uh, we're really excited to bring our Japanese grocery store to Arlington. We, we hope it'll be a welcome and pleasant addition to, to the Arlington community. Um, during our research, we found out that Arlington actually has one of the highest percentages of Japanese populations in Massachusetts outside of the Boston Somerville area. And so we really think that uh, helping support these immigrant residents and uh, also kind of uh, become a part of the larger community will really be a, a boon to the Arlington area. Thank you, welcome. I'll turn to the board for any questions, comments, or motions. Mr. Diggins? Hey, I will motion approval of the license and, and, and um, yeah, welcome. It's a good, I think it'll be great to have you know, uh, your, uh, your establishment in, in, uh, in the Heights. You know, that's a, a, yeah, it's a really good location in the Heights. I think you should certainly use uh, your cuisine. Your, um, your cuisine. Uh, just a curiosity question, uh, red bean mochi? We will have that, yeah. Excellent. I'll be there many times. Thank you. Great. And Mr. Corsi? I, yeah, I'll second the motion. And um, it just if I could add, Mr. Chairman, subject to the conditions can, contained within the, the reports, and I, I do note there are 
a number of conditions here, because, and I think there are a number of things that need to be done, but subject to those conditions, I'd move approval. Uh, second, Mr. Diggins' motion, rather. Thank you. Mrs. Mahan? I want to say welcome to mm -hmm. Mr. Mr. Nakama. Um, and very good research on your target market, as well as um, other ethnicities. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy touched on my uh, first point I was going to raise subject to conditions and comments um, regarding from our other town departments. And the other thing I really wanted to kind of give kudos to you on was your uh, maintenance program. That's something that I and my colleagues pay particular attention to, um, especially where we have businesses and residences, sometimes close together, sometimes not. Um, I don't have a single question for you on your maintenance program of what is missing from there because you have everything and a little more than some. So um, I, I am confident that you're going to be a great partner business owner here in Arlington and I wish you nothing but success. And thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And just thank you for choosing Arlington. I live in that side of town. So I'm excited to patronize your business once you get going and get to follow up on what Mrs. Mahan said. We do appreciate the thoroughness of your application. You know, our application when we get food vendor applications, they're all over the spectrum as to you know the information provided and your you obviously took a lot of time on your, on your application. We appreciate that. All right, so we have a motion subject to condition from Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy, Attorney Hunt. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Come on. Look forward to your business. Alrighty, that brings us to our open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or a request. So at this time, if you would like to speak at our open forum, if you can use the raise hand function on your Zoom application. I don't believe we have anyone calling in. Mr. Chaplin? There are no hands raised right now, Mr. Chair. All right, and that will close our open forum. So that takes us to traffic rules and order and other business. Item number seven for, for approval, advance of funds in lieu of borrowing. Our treasurer, Phyllis Marshall. Here she comes. I think, I think she's on audio now. Oh, yeah. Good evening. Good evening. I uh, appreciate your uh, putting me on the agenda for this evening. Um, the, um, I submitted these forms for your consideration. They are um, a form from the Department of Revenue, uh, Division of Local Services, uh, that, and we are requesting um, advance of funds in lieu of borrowing um, as I noted, we are planning, we're in the, we're in the process of putting together the bond issue that we will have in February. Um, the sale is planned for February 18th and um, I will be back before the select board on the 22nd um, to have you act on that um, bond sale. Um, the two projects that are going to be included, two of the projects that are going to be included in that borrowing are the um, first installment of the Department of Public Works project for uh, renovation and construction. And um, the amount that is uh, requested um, in advance of the borrowing is $300,000, um, which has, um, needed by the Department of Public Works for the OPM costs and some of the 
um, bid preparation documents. And um, those funds will be needed before we receive the money for the bond issue. Um, the money will be received um, early in March, before the middle of March, but um, we're looking to use those funds, the 300,000 of the 21 and a half million that will be planned for that borrowing um, and spend those before uh, we're looking for a transfer the, of those funds this week and um, we'll spend them before the bond issue proceeds are received. Once they're received, then we will refund. Um, we will transfer the money back so that it is to the general fund. The second project that we're looking for an, another $300,000 in advance of the borrowing is for the work that's being done out front of the town hall. All of those parts for making the town hall more accessible and safe are um, expected to be completed shortly. And so we will um, are looking to use $300,000 which is the total amount that will be included in the bond issue in February. The um, state requires that if we're going to borrow in advance of the borrowing, if we're gonna get an advance um, before the borrowing, then we need to demonstrate the balances that we have on hand. Um, the unappropriated free cash is uh, $5,416,980. Um, and we um, only need 600,000. So we're looking for you to sign off on that and approve this, please. All right, thank you. I will turn to the board for any questions, comments, or motions. Mrs. Mahan. Um, first, I'd like to move approval and I have two questions. Um, regarding uh, the follow, following agenda item, about um, opportunity to refinance bond issues as of August 2010. I'm assuming that, or am I correct that this agenda item um, doesn't fall within our next uh, board agenda item. So that would not be applicable or is it in terms of being able to refinance it? Uh. It does not apply, they're separate issues. Okay. Um, these are in advance of the borrowing that we have planned. The refunding, which is next, is um, maybe done at the same time, but it doesn't affect these funds. Okay, thank you. And my second question would be, um, uh, these advance funds that are available, I guess, under restricted funds, what exactly is that unrestricted funds? Um, like if you had to look on, uh, if I asked Ida Cody, our comptroller, you know, where, mm -hmm. where are the restricted funds? Is it free cash or somewhere else? It's unappropriated free cash. So we, um, we have some free cash that was appropriated for the budget for this year, which is being used to pay the budgetary costs. And these are not appropriated. Did I answer your question? If you know off the top of your head, um, how much is the allocation to available unrestricted funds? Is it just the, the amount of these two projects? Is it close to the amount of these two projects or is it something else? I'm not sure I understand the question. I'm sorry. Um, we- yeah, Phyllis, I can, I can jump in. All right. So free cash was certified this year at $11,318,368. Okay. So though free cash is from an accounting point of view, not exactly what would be termed a designated fund balance. Um, from a conceptual point of view, it, it's close to the same amount. So functionally, um, functionally, uh, you, you could think about this as being called an internal borrowing, where these funds exist in the town's coffers. Um, we will be borrowing for them, but before we borrow, we'll take them from the existing coffers, be able to expend them, 
And then when we borrow the money via a bond, put them right back into the town coffers so that they are impact, they're not impacted at all. And last question, I promise, um, Mr. Chair. Um, when this funding comes back, does it go to free cash or general fund or they're both the same thing? It, it becomes redeposited in the general fund. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and, and Mr. Chaplin. Mrs. Acquasi? Yeah, I'll, I'll second Mrs. Mahan's motion and, and thank you, Ms. Marshall, for the explanation on the two borrowings and, and clarifying for me what each one was being being used for. Thank you. Mr. Diggins? I saw it makes perfect sense to me. I mean, I'm glad we have the funds that we can do this. It just seems like an exercise in efficiency. So great, thanks, happy to approve it. All right. Attorney Hyde, we have a motion for approval by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Corsi. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you. And that takes us to item number eight on our agenda for discussion, Arlington refunding opportunity. Our town treasurer again, Mrs. Marshall. Thank you. Uh, this is an opportunity that comes to us on occasion um these um this was a seven million dollar seven million two hundred fifty eight thousand dollar bond issue in august of 2010 and um as you may know bond issues have a, a period of time where there is an opportunity to refund or refinance them and um so Hilltop, who is our financial advisor, is looking at that analysis um, and will um, at, um, continue to be reviewing it and uh, investigating it. Um, but what would be eligible for refunding is about 40% of that original issue, so which is about $2,945,000. Um, those are items that were within that borrowing that have a bond life of uh, some of them are five more years and three of them have 10 years remaining on them. And um, so given the current interest rates um, that we're seeing uh, at this point in time, it appears that we could reduce our debt service over the remaining term of the bond for 10 years uh, in the, about uh, a range right now of $250,000. So they are looking at the numbers and we'll look at them up until we sell bonds in February to make sure that we will in fact save money. And um, there has it has to meet a certain threshold. Um, we have to save more than 3% of the that service that we, uh, the bonds are currently issued at. And so we are um, um, working with Hilltop to make sure that um, all of the legal requirements are met by the town and um, the uh, tax requirements can be meet, met. So we will review that with bond council. And then this will come back to you um, in February when the the planned bond issue for this year comes to you. Thank you. All right, Mr. Diggins. Uh, I will move uh, approval you know, of, of this request. Uh, and uh, once again, you know, it makes sense. I mean, uh, I would expect you know, a good department like ours to be, to be on top of a situation like this. I mean, uh, it's amazing though that uh, coming out of the economic crisis of 2008 with depressed interest rates, we would have an opportunity 10 years later, I mean, at lower rates I mean, to, um, to refinance. I mean, the, uh, what makes this good opportunity for us is a really bad economy situation, economic situation. So um, uh, let's, um, let's do it. Let's hope um, things improve for all of us in the upcoming years. All right, hey, Mrs. Mon. Um, I will definitely second Mr. Diggins' motion. Um, my only questions would be um, the municipal bonds, um, the actual number that this is based on, is it the 
two million nine hundred thousand forty five dollars or is it the seven million two hundred fifty eight thousand dollars approximately Mr. the, the um, 60% of the bond has already been paid off. Um, and so some of them had shorter terms. Some of them had seven years. Some of them had five years. Some of them had 10 years. And so, in fact, we just paid three of the issues. I mean, three of the items within that issue. So the amount that remains outstanding is the 2945000 Okay, thank you. And um, am I correct by doing my very... Um, limited math in terms of five and 10 years that the bonds originally issued in August, 2010. Um, I think you said one has five years and or three have 10 years or more. Am I correct that that's the two remaining um, sell items to calculate and are those all town municipal bond projects or town and school? Um, they are town and school. There are um, um, the foot I'm, 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 Yeah, I'm just doing the math. So if it was bond There's issue in 2010, um, we're in 2020, at least one has five more years. So that would be a 25 year and or three have 10 more years, so that'll be a 30 year bond. So we're talking about 25 and 30 year bonds that are left, bond issue. Um, they were authorized in 10 and they they terminate in 2030. So there are 20 year bonds and 15 year bonds that remain. Um, and it um, there is no exempt debt in here. It's all um, taxable debt. Well, general fund debt. Okay. And thank you for answering my questions. I just, I'm just trying to like, definitely have my head, head around it. And I understand that we'll also be taking another vote in February. So if I have any other questions, I'll um, follow up with our treasurer and or our select board member, fin, former FinCom member, and get educated that way and not at a meeting. So I, I appreciate the uh, leeway and allowing me to ask these questions and get the answer. I, I definitely do appreciate it. Thank you. And Mr. Corsten. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so question, uh, Ms. Macho, on the on the refunding bonds, and they will be at a lower interest rate, but what, what will the term of those bonds be? I don't know that. I think it's the same term, but I um, uh, that's part of the analysis that they run is to determine what the numbers will look like and, and over the, the term for which we will be able to reduce the debt service and the bondholder will stay protected. So um, they will be running those numbers. And um, as we get closer to the, the bond issue, we'll know whether we're, the bond issue that's planned for the 18th, we will know whether we can pull the trigger on this or not. Okay, great. That, and thank, thank you very much. And, and I appreciate that that will be part of the analysis. So they, I think it's great to reduce interest rates, but at the same time, um, I'd, I'd like to see what the savings are if we're, we're extending term dramatically. I don't think the intent is to extend it, but. Um, no, okay. No, that's, thank you. All right. And thank you. And thank you for your explanations. Uh, so Attorney Heim, we have a motion for approval by Mr. Diggins, second by Mrs. Mahan. Hmm. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And thank you, Mrs. Marshall. All right. So item number nine on our agenda is vote police civilian advisory board study committee select board designee. So we put this on our agenda to get the ball rolling on this. Um, attorney, have you been? I think there were questions that had been posed to me about whether or not this was an action if they had to be a select board member or any designee that we chose. So, the way the vote is articulated, it does allow for a designee, uh, as 
set forth by the select board. It's, it's not really an appointment. It's a slight distinction between an appointment and a designee. So in theory, you could, for example, designate Ms. Kropelka if she was uh, able because she's been your pro temp in other circumstances when you're electing a new board. Um, but the, the, the base uh, idea is, is clearly to have it be a member of the select board or some designee of the select board who would represent uh, the board itself in yep. this function. Thank you. All right, and I'll just turn right to the board here. And Ms. Mahan. Um, I guess I would just note that the proponents of this committee um, designated the member of the select board or its designee uh, town council and the police chief are all ex officio non-voting members and from as the chair has noted that from the way that I um, interpreted the uh, language around this that the select board member or its designee would basically be the administrative person to uh, schedule the first meeting um, and at that meeting the then committee members, which include the non, three non-voting ex officio members, as well as the remaining voting members would call a structural uh, meeting um, to appoint who should do that going forward. So I guess, um, unless I hear anything from one of my colleagues that I would um, just uh, be concurrent with past practice and appoint um, Mrs. Kropelka. Um, as our designee um, for the purpose of solely doing the administrative task to set up the first meeting, which as a result of that meeting, um, the voting members will vote each other in terms of moving forward and either Mrs. Kropelka or uh, someone designated from the select board office will continue on in a very minimalist role um, with no voting uh, authority as well as uh, no longer after the first meeting any oversight on the uh, administration, functional administration of the meeting. So unless one of my colleagues, I'm going to look to see if anyone raises their hand, wants to be the designee as a non-voting member to basically do the administrative stuff to set up the first meeting, my motion would be to nominate Mrs. Kropelka. All right, Mr. Corsi. Uh, yeah, I'll second Mrs. Mahan's motion. All right, Mr. Diggins. Sounds good to me. No comment. No first comment. Thank you. And that works for me. So, Attorney Hyde, we have a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Corsi. <clears throat> Mrs. Mahan. Sorry. <laughs> I was just texting Mrs. Kropelka my condolences. <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> Mr. DeCorsi. Yes. Mr. Diggins. I'll text her my congratulations, yes. <laughs> Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Unanimous vote. Thank you. All right, so this takes us to item number 10 on our agenda. So this is a presentation by Calix Peak. It's just a little bit of the background on how this agenda item came up on. A few months back, we had few presentations regarding our last remaining community host agreement, or you know, we can give as many community host agreements as we want. There's only one special permit available. We did not approve either of the community host agreements in the time since then we've had I've had a few conversations with council from LXP and I know they've done some community outreach and they just wanted an opportunity to come and present to us, you know, what if any progress they've made. Um, and then after that, you know, it will turn to the board to determine what, if any motion they want to take. We may, may take no action whatsoever tonight. We may set up a, a time frame as to what, where we want to go with the community host agreement process, or we can take a motion on it. Um, before I do so, 
before I promote Calix Peak, are there any board members that would like to speak on this before we hear from the from the applicants? Mrs. Mahan? Yes, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I, I just would state that uh, when we open the process for the community, oh, CHA, I can't think of what the acronym is for, um, okay. for these establishments, we afforded each um, applicant over two hours um, to make their presentation. And my only concern is um, that by engaging in this process, we're setting a precedent that uh, when we take a vote um, and it does not go with for an approval that this could be a way to sort of circumvent um, the process and also not affording the opportunity for anyone or others that also were not successful um, to come before the board like this. Um, but I, I, I am guided by the chairman's uh, representation that we will hear from um, Calix Peak, is that right? Yeah, Calix Peak here tonight. But I really would like to stress that um, of the over two hour presentation, about an hour usually for each of the applicants um, is on the subject matter that they wanna present. I do not want to go through another hour. I would appreciate a very brief uh, three minute or less presentation from Calix Peak. And my um, intention would be not to vote to reconsider um, our vote and just, I'm not making this motion, but I just wanna let my colleagues know, you know, where my head, mind is at, that it would just be a, a motion to receive their uh, information and encourage them at any future date when we open up the process for the one remaining um, license, um, which is a privilege, it's not a, a right to anyone, that that's when they should uh, go to present more in-depth information. So uh, I'm not sure of the conversation, Mr. Hurd, that you've had with them, but I, I have read the memorandum and 42 page um, study contained therein. Um, and I, I just don't wanna, I'm hoping this won't be a 15, 20, 30 minute um, presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Any other additional comments? Mr. Chaplin? Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, I just wanted to share as the board and those in attendance know Mr. Curo was unable to join uh, the meeting tonight, but he had asked me in lead up to the meeting to request of the Arlington Police Department any calls for response for congregating at Nora Brown Park, Hattie Sims Park, or Hills Hill. Uh, I've not been able to collect those reports yet, but he did want me to state on the record that he had made that request. Sure. Thank you. All right, if we can promote Attorney D'Agostino. I um, don't see anyone additional. Mr. Chairman? Yes. I, I think Victoria Ireton is also from Calix. Yep. yep, we can promote her as well. Ed Schmaltz as well, Mr. Chairman. Ed is not showing up on the attendee list, Peter. He texted me that he was on, but maybe I, I, I did see his name earlier. He's, he's not there anymore. There are two Victoria Iretons. Is it possible that he is on under her account? No, he would be under his own. Oh, that one just disappeared. It's his picture. Well, that's his picture. <laughs> uh oh. Uh oh. Okay. So Adam, do you want to, there's another Victoria Ironson in the attendees. All right, so Attorney D'Agostino, if you could, my thought was, if you could just take about five minutes to just update us as to, you know, what it is you, you wanted to present to the board and what you've done. 
in the past couple of months, and then we'll turn to the board for any questions, and then the board will have a brief discussion after that. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and to the board members. I'll, I'll do my best to stay within that five minutes. Just for the record, I'm not an attorney. I just want to make that clear. Yeah, no, I just, just so I'm not misleading. That, that's you. a good thing. <laughs> uh, but I appreciate the time and I, I appreciate uh, the members' comments, so I'll keep it brief. Uh, we don't have a lot to expand on, just given you know a five-minute time window. Our cover letter covered pretty in-depth what we sought to present to the board tonight. Um, so maybe just by way of where we understand to be in the process and, and what may be appropriate as, you know, to consider for the board to consider, uh, you know, when we attended both of the meetings, the board gave us feedback, as we mentioned in our letter, relative to traffic concerns. So we went out and we hired a firm to do the work that we thought the board would need to further consider this matter. So that was the, really the purpose. I was just in response to some of the comments made by the board during prior meetings. And then additionally, uh, you know, the board wanted to get some uh, insight onto community feedback. I, I do want to draw one line on the community feedback if I could. The community feedback was incredibly targeted based on people who we were able to determine who have been active in the community do through different initiatives. It was not a broad based community outreach meeting in the same way you would do it under the CCC regulations. Um, I just wanna be clear about that, that it wasn't like we posted it in the paper or, or sent letters to abutters. The main reason for that is under the CCC's administrative order number one, we would need permission from the board before we conducted that scale of a meeting. So under that administrative order, which was enacted due to COVID, uh, we couldn't just go and do it on our own. So I just want to be clear that there was a reason that broad-based outreach wasn't conducted in that same way that we would normally do it for a community outreach meeting um, and that we were we limited it in scope to uh, you know targeted outreach with people who we were able to determine were active in the community. So I just want to put the right point on the community outreach and not over you know overstate what what our efforts are there. Um, but where we understand the process is the, the, the select board has this matter open. They have two applicants in front of them. I, I don't remember the board taking a motion to close it. Um, there is another, based on your, under, under the 20% rule, there's another, uh, you know, license that ultimately would be issued in, in Arlington. It could go to anybody at any time. We all recognize that. And I, I certainly appreciate that. Um, but we thought given the 2000 foot buffer, issue that property uh, wasn't really workable based on the feedback we had heard and based on the feedback we thought that our property was still workable if we were able to answer some questions. So that was the reason we made the re request for reconsideration to the board. Uh, we're still hopeful the board would consider that in some way uh, and maybe uh, given uh, the members comments previously uh, maybe a middle ground would be the board authorize us to conduct a community outreach meeting uh, we could do that in accordance with the CCC regulations administrative order, which would give the board a greater sense of the feedback um, from the, the abutters specifically, and we would notice it in the paper, so on and so forth. So um, I, I, I can't imagine the town would open this process a, a third time, but certainly it could. So we were just hopeful that uh, given we've participated in both rounds now and we've had multiple locations based on the zoning requirements, uh, one in the first round was within a 2000 foot buffer, so we couldn't use it. And then this property, which appears to comply with the zoning, we're hopeful to continue the discussion with the board. And without expanding on the 44 page memo and, and being respectful of the members comments, I thought maybe us, uh, the board authorizing us to conduct a community outreach meeting would be a middle ground to give the board further uh, information to consider uh, before it made a decision one way or the other. So with that, I hope I stayed within five minutes and I appreciate the time and happy to answer any questions relative to the memo we did submit. I'm going to turn to the board for any questions. Um, and then once we get through the question portion, we'll, the board amongst ourselves will have a discussion about where we go from here. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, so appreciate you coming back. I appreciate your uh, continuing to work this issue in our conversations. Uh, I just have uh, some, some questions um, regarding the uh, traffic uh, analysis, and these are more curiosity questions. Uh, so the, I, I understand the traffic counts were conducted on December either 3rd or 10th. Of this year. Correct. 
you know. So um, any indication as to whether the, the traffic patterns were different uh, than they were a year ago? Because we are doing, uh, we are in a pandemic. I know that the other two time points were quite a bit in the past, I mean, but any sense as to how reliable or indicative those numbers are of what we might have if we return somewhat to normal? That's a great question. I appreciate it. Uh, one, the traffic count data was based on the historical data, and the engineers said the data was within what is considered an acceptable time frame to still use. So the on-site assessment, the reason we took that other step is board members had specifically raised the concern about queuing at the traffic light. And the traffic engineer said, well, the only way for us to figure that out is we have to go stand there and watch and see what happens. So you see the full assessment where they literally counted every car. Uh, that, that data was used solely to assess the queuing. Uh, and to your point, Mr. Diggins, yes, it, it could queue more maybe at a busier time or, or less at a slower time. So certainly we would need to consider that. Um, but the traffic study data was based on those, that's the, the, that historical data. So two data points used for two different purposes. And the, the queuing, the reason we had the engineers go on site and do the queuing was, was in direct response to a member's question about how the queuing of that light may affect the site. And that's why we included in our memo that they recommended, they being the traffic engineers, recommended we make the east entrance enter entry only and the west entrance exit only. And that in their mind uh, would alleviate any of the queuing concerns because the traffic never backed up so much as to block that sent second uh, exit. So that would allow people to come out and turn left and get in line at the light. So two different data points used for different things. Hopefully that clears that up. Yeah, well, I guess the, the question, um, um, Mr. Chair, is, is, is that I mean, do you think the, I guess I have to get my directions, think through my directions. Um, Having not really thought through the directions in the east-west, um, do you think the queuing uh, would be more of a problem if the traffic were heavier? Uh, Mr. Chair, through you if I could. Um, the, based on the historical traffic counts, they thought the queuing was representative of what they would normally expect to see. But we all have to acknowledge the fact that it is COVID. There could be less people traveling. So we're just being respectful of that. But they felt the data they got they collected was uh, a good sample size for us, for them to determine whether or not the west entrance gets blocked. And as you're looking at the site, Mr. Diggins, it's the one to the left. So right. the, the, the exit further from the light. Right. And, and so the entire time they were there, I believe that that uh, entrance never was blocked. And we would look have to look back to the report. But from my memory, I don't think it was ever blocked during that time. So even if you added a few cars, most likely it wouldn't be blocked. And even at that, it would only impact people coming out of there and turning left. If, if in fact, it, uh, by creating an entrance exit, uh, people coming out and turning left would, only, would, would be the people having to wait. It wouldn't affect people coming in and getting off of the street. Right. And I'll just make one more comment. I mean, and this is maybe somewhat educational to my colleagues and anyone else that watches this. So um, uh, I have been doing some, been become a, lot, a bit more enlightened as to the, the work that IT does, the Institute for Traffic uh, Transportation Engineers. And, um, and uh, it was interesting looking back at some of their older um, data I mean, that the amount of traffic that they predicted did not emerge I mean, and uh, it seems to be a bit of an issue with certain kinds of um, locations certain places with certain kinds of density and I think I mean um, where where we're looking at it in Arlington might be one of those sorts of, of places so so um so you know um, uh, it, and also uh, one of the reasons for a lot of times the the car traffic not materialize it as they expect it is that they don't take into account properly other modes being like walking, um, bicycling and, and whatever. So uh, I just point that out. Uh, and, and for, um, and if, if you drive a lot, I'm, I, I, I pretty much do transportation, public transportation and walking. I mean, to what extent is queuing even a problem? I mean, so it's like, I mean, let's say it does back up. I mean, does it really make it hard for people to insert themselves in the traffic. I mean, I used to drive, I mean, and, and it was like, well, you might have to wait and have someone like let you in, but that's about the extent of it. Is there anything more serious? I mean, uh, does it increase the chances of accidents or, or something else negative? 
Mr. Chairman, if I could, through you. Um, the, the, the concern on queuing, Mr. Diggins, was we didn't want anybody backed up onto the road. So if for some reason somebody couldn't get out, that may prevent somebody else from getting in, and that would create a traffic concern. And so with the proposal of creating an entrance only and an exit only, that would mean no one leaving would be blocking somebody from entering. So anybody queuing on would be on site and not on the road. So we've now moved. So to your point, if somebody couldn't get out for some reason, all that means is they'd be stuck in our parking lot. Uh, the purpose of having the entrance and exit was to keep everybody coming in off of the road, and not having uh, any backup. But I also agree that as these facilities have opened across the state, they're not quite seeing the traffic issues that they anticipated. But nonetheless, that was the reason for that approach. And of course, we'd work through that with the planning board, yeah. you know, should this be forward. I appreciate that. Thanks for the three, four answers. I'm done. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. D'Agostino, for the presentation. I don't have any questions on what was being presented, and, and um, I'm going to reserve comments for our, our reconsideration or our discussion after questions are made. Yep. Mrs. Mahan. Um, um, thank you, Mr. Chair and um, Mr. D'Agostino, and I, you're certainly representing um, Calix Peak um, as diligently and above and beyond as possible. But I, I just want to point out that the board held hearings on the um, HCA, um, and we when we made a decision, it was a, an up or down decision. It wasn't, we need more information from you. The point that you're raising here tonight was one of the points that was raised for, um, that was taken into consideration for our denial um, of your request. Um, um, traffic queuing wasn't the only tantamount issue. Um, there were other issues that um, came into play as well as um, the request by our colleague, Mr. Carroll, um, for more information that um, really doesn't play into the traffic queuing issue. And again, um, while I understand going through this exercise and the, the board and the chair affording you the opportunity to um, present this information, um, again, I am inclined to not have a, a, a mini HCA host community agreement. There it is, it came to me, host community agreement meeting um, after we've already made a decision. Um, what I would um, encourage you to do is to uh, keep this information perhaps uh, study traffic queuing when we get back to the new normal and um, the traffic issue is something that's able to be studied uh, more appropriately to um, a post COVID maintaining world, uh, but that any future board, um, if and when they decide that the host community agreement application process is open again, which it is not right now, we made a decision um, that that would be uh, the time that you uh, provide this information as well as, I understand you're saying you can't have the um, extensive community outreach um, portion of it unless this board asks you to, I would disagree. Um, what, you can do whatever you want. Um, so uh, again, I myself will not be making a motion to reconsider. I think this just should be, um, if I allowed unless some of my colleagues have a different motion. Again, I'm not gonna ma make it right now until the chair um, has his remarks and questions answered. My motion would be uh, to move receipt and encourage you to um, do whatever you think is appropriate due diligence um, up to the time that this board or a future board opens up the last of the remaining three uh, applications for a house community agreement. And I just don't agree with this circumvention um, that I uh, interpret as, as this being right now. So um, thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you, Mr. Degasino. Thank you, Mr. Thoughts? Chairman. I, I appreciate the opportunity and uh, the time tonight by the board to hear us out. Thank you. A minute here. Mr. 
Is a chapter line you can you know, just make it so we just have the board on the webinar function now. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not. A... So the board's gonna have a discussion now. Oh, you and me, I, got I got it. Got it. Got it. Right. I don't demoted. know what the proper term is. I don't want to say demote. We're getting demoted. <laughs> but. I apologize. I thought when you said that we were already in the executive session and I'm like, did I fall asleep for 20 minutes? <laughs> what happened? All right. So I, you know, I, I'm going to open it up to the board now just for where do we go from here? Again, you know, this wasn't set up to restart the process. We just said, because we had had a number of conversations with the applicant and they wanted to give us an update. I did want to at least give them the opportunity to do so. And, you know, Attorney Heim can certainly jump in on this, but the, we have the ability to approve as many community host agreements as we feel. We have the ability to not approve any community host agreements. I know we've had a set process. So we can either move receipt, we can come up with a plan for the future or take any more motions therefrom. So I will go to Mr. Diggins. Hey, so I, I, I totally understand me where um, uh, my colleague, um, Ms. Ms. Mahan is coming from on this. And, uh, and I'll say for myself, I mean, what I struggle with and, um, in as a member of the select board and, uh, is the um, rapidity at which we often need to make weighty decisions. And, uh, and I, I generally we like to, be taking information, listen to what people say, and then go back and think about it for a while, and then come back and make a decision. And uh, and, and I think we had I had the opportunity to um, sleep on it. And uh, I I would have voted I me mean, to allow Calix, especially after I pondered some of the comments that were made, in, particularly by you and Mr. Corsi, and um, during the. Uh, discussion as I was was um, well as I thought about it later on, uh, I was kind of caught up in 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 um, pretty much not so much that I felt that East Arlington would be a better location, but but that I thought that the two thousand feet was close enough, and I understood uh, your argument, you know, or the argument that was posed it was that he, the previous location was next because it was within 2000 feet by the way we measured it. You know? And so, and I appreciated the fact that they went back in an attempt to deal with our concerns. You know? and, and I am not going to move for reconsideration out of respect and an understanding of with what Mrs. Mahan has said, but I will say that if we did vote on it, and um, I, I would vote positively for it. Thank you. Mr. Chair. This is a question. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so I, I was one of the two votes in favor of uh, Calix Peak and, and I, I don't, I think if there is going to be a motion for reconsideration, I think two things. One, it, it, if there is something that has changed in other members' minds, that, that the motion should come from one of the members who is in the majority. But two, if there is going to be reconsideration, I, I think out of fairness, the other applicant that was heard that evening should be notified that there is a reconsideration if there's anything else that they want to present to the board. So I. I I put it in favor of Felix Peak on, on the second of um, we one week and one week had the vote, but I, I, I being in the minority, um, you know, my vote remains remains the same, but I don't think it's, it's one of the two votes on, on the uh, side that wasn't successful. I don't think I place to move consideration. And Ms. Mahan? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, 
First, I'd like to make a motion to move receipt. No further action. Um, and I, I just would add to that that we have one remaining um, HCA available. It doesn't mean we have to give it out with this current board or this current board in the following year. Um, like my colleagues, I'm all about process and protocol and um, for us to um, begin that process to giving the last um, HCA means opening the application process again, as Mr. DeCourcy stated, uh, giving everybody notice, this applicant, the other applicant that wasn't successful and any other applicants um, that may be considering it. So um, that's the reason why I don't think I'm not making a motion to reconsider. I'm making the motion to uh, move receipt. And I encourage Calix Peak, um, as well as the other applicant that we did not grant a license to, because as Mr. Diggins spoke to, the uh, proximity to the other East Arlington establishment, we did vote for that they wait until either this current board or a future board um, takes a vote, makes a decision and takes a vote to um, open the HCA application and everyone should follow the same process. So again, I, I would make a, a motion, motion to move receipt and no further action. All right, uh, Mr. Diggins, do you have a second on the motion? I'll, I'll second it for, um, for, for the debate, you know, but I have a, a question, you know, um, and maybe this is to you, Mr. Hearn. You know, um, what would be, I, I guess I would like to have Mr. Kiro in on this, you know, discussion before we made, you know, any decision, especially decision that's just going to essentially um, end the process here, you know, um, you know, since he was one of the three of us, you know, in the negative on this, you know, so would, it, at what point should I ask that we wait for him to be present with us? So if you second in Ms. Mahan's motion, then we'd be waiting till uh, a, a new, a different meeting to make take any action on a community post agreement anyways, if that makes sense. Right, right. But I, I guess my question is if, if we do vote positively for Ms. Mahan's motion, does that end the process here or could we still bring it up the, mm -hmm. at the next meeting, have a discussion that includes Mr. Kuro oh. and, then, and then decide, you know. Well, there is no process for community host agreements, but what, <laughs> what I'm just trying to do here is get thoughts on the board on where we wanna go move forward on this the last remaining item. We had an applicant that kept in touch with us. So if we want to open a whole new process, that's fine. We don't have to do anything with it. We can just say we're not going to take any votes on community house agreements for whatever period of time. And Attorney Heim could correct me if I'm wrong on that. But we also have gone through the process a few times. And I think what has been crystal clear to me is that with the current zoning bylaws as we have it, there are very few locations. Um, and every time we do go through the process, I think there is a huge administrative burden on particularly Attorney Himes office as far as taking applicants. But if it's the will of the board to just move receipt and leave it at that, then we're free to do so. I could, Mr. Chair, um, just to Mr. Diggins um, points that he raised, if that's okay. Yep. Um, Mr. Diggins, what I'm trying to say is the town through the ballot initiative has up to three HCA um, applications that we could put out. We've done that a couple of times. We've granted two, there's one remaining. There is no requirement that we have to 
this current board, give out that third remaining. Um, we had a vote by the board um, that was three to two. Um, the other ones that have gone through, I'm pretty sure were unanimous. Um, and I'm, I'm all about process protocol. Uh, to me, this is circumventing the process. We opened up the HCA applications. We heard from two applicants. We um, indicated by our vote that we didn't approve either one of them. We raised various points with each of the applicants. With Calix Peak, it wasn't just the traffic queuing that they've done the study during the pandemic. Um, we also indicated, Mr. Kiro, our colleague indicated um, the neighborhoods, neighborhood sentiments around that. Um, and I understand that the Calix Peak applicant is falling back on um, because their interpretation uh, of the process that uh, they can't do a community outreach meeting without a direction from the board, meaning make a motion to reconsider and approve it. I strongly disagree. That should have been their due diligence. Um, to me, with all due respect, that's a cop out. Um, you could say, well, it's not until we get into a certain point in the process that we're required to have neighborhood outreach and community meetings. I agree with that. But to me, a good applicant does that on their own, not because they're directed to. And to me, that goes to the veracity of the application. And again, um, I, I'm really uncomfortable that we're, we opened the HCA applications, we voted. My preference would be um, there's no decision on Calix Peak or anybody else who might want to come in and say, I would like a motion for consideration. I hadn't applied, but since you're circumventing the process that you laid out, I'd like a motion for consideration for mine. Again, I, I would like to get back to, we're setting precedent here. And I want to get back to a process that we don't consider Calix Peak the other applicant that wasn't successful and or any future applicants in the, that might um, apply until this current board or a future board says we are now opening the HCA applications for the third and last remaining um, ballot initiative approved um, marijuana establishment. So um, I just don't like this. It's not leaving a good taste in my mouth. Um, it, I'm the kind of like you play by the rules. Select board opens the HCA application process. Everybody applies. It's a yay or nay. That's it. You don't find a way to circumvent the HCA application process that pretty much the board is establishing right now because the ballot initiative went through and each select board or, or, or city council had established their process. I'd really like to stick to the process and not have this sort of backdoor thing. So. But that that would be my comments on that. I, I it's you know it's an interest of fair play. I, I just don't think this is fair. Um, I think if the other applicant that, that was denied was told, listen, the board will cap capitulate, and you can come in and ask for a motion to reconsider, and totally ignore waiting for the HCA application process to reopen. I think they would have done the same, as well as I think it opens the Pandora's box of um, a company or companies that didn't even apply that says well, I want to come in for consideration outside of your HCA application process and protocol that you've outlined. So um, I, I apologize for <laughs> talking to All right. Any additional comments, Ms. Diggins? I mean, I understand the points. I mean, my question was just be whether or not we wanted to wait until Mr. Kuro could weigh in, in person. I mean, that was it. it uh, so so um, and I would like for that to happen, but I'm not adamant about it. I mean, I understand um, Ms. Mahan's arguments. I mean, I certainly understand yours too, Mr. Hurd, about I mean, it just um, uh, being a, a process, I mean, that does take resources, but, you know, I mean, uh, uh, resources, we we have the resources to use them. <laughs> so so uh, uh, if I had to, to uh, I mean, I am a process person too, you know, and, and uh, 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 aid. I am wary of precedents, you know, uh, and, and, but, but, um, I think I've said all I need to say on this, you know, so, um, I just don't have anything new to add to it, you know, so, uh, we have the motion, and I have seconded it, so I have stopped talking and
turn things back over to you, dear chair. Mr. Corsi, anything additional? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And and um, just a couple of comments. And I, and I think um, you know, part, part of the, and I understand Mrs. Mahan's concerns. I, I think part of the issue here too is, is um, there aren't, there isn't a, a, a clear appeal process or, or a process to go forward here. And, and right now we did take our action when um, back a, a while back when and we didn't vote to, to, to grant either uh, move forward with an HCA with either company. I, I think to me, and I'd, I'd offer this as amendment to, to, to strike no further action, just move receipt, because that's really all that's before us. I think Calix B came in this evening to make a presentation and we're moving receipt. I, I don't hear any other members who are in the um, majority moving reconsideration. And, and as I said earlier, if we did go to that stage, I out of that for fairness for me is if we did go to that stage, the other applicant who was in the same round should be notified. But I think for purposes of what's before us tonight, it's, it's really a receipt of a report rather than any further action for me. So I, I offer that as, a, a, as an amendment, but I don't offer any further action this evening. And Mr. Chair, I would accept that as a friendly amendment that my motion is solely to move receipt. Okay. Attorney Hahn, do you have anything to add? No, Mr. Chair, unless there's specific questions from the board. All right, so we have a motion to receive by Ms. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Attorney Hahn. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's unanimous vote. That takes us to item number 11 on the agenda for discussion and approval Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter banner display. We have Mr. Curl, who is not with us tonight, and Mr. DeCourcy, who had worked on this presentation for us. So with that, I will turn to Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, unfortunately, Mr. Carol couldn't be with us this evening and, and um, he was instrumental in, in putting together the memorandum that's in your agenda packet this evening. And, and this follows from discussions that you know, we, we've had since, since June, but I go back to July where there was discussions about the board, so, you know, whether it was to the town manager, whether it was to the board, developing a plan for the display of, of banners at town hall, specifically the Black Lives Matter banner. We also had a discussion in September at the time we voted to remove the, the Black Lives Matter banner at the end of September. Um, and we, we talked about developing a plan and, and, and really didn't put any specifics to it. Since we had the, um, the resolution Warren article hearing um, prior to the special town meeting, Mr. Curo and I have, had gotten together and, and um, had attempted to come up with recommendations to the board uh, going forward and, and things for the board to think about. And, and those are laid out in the memo. I don't wanna um, read the, the, the memo verbatim, but there was four items that we were recommending to the board. Um, and the, 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 I will go through each one of those and, and um, um, and then we can open it up for discussion. Um, the four items that we were recommending for the board's consideration was one, development of a policy incorporating the longstanding precedent of displaying banners and other symbols and adornments on town hall in a temporary recurring manner in conjunction with specific observances or town initiatives in a way that respects the shared nature of public space. The second, recommendation for the board's consideration is to consider the customization of any Black Lives Matter banner with the seal of the town and any additional language clarifying this as a statement of values rather than an endorsement of a particular organization. Third, and, and this goes to the timing, um, Mr. Carroll couldn't be here tonight that this recommendation actually would call for action between now and our next meeting. Um, we're recommending the prioritization of the annual display of a newly customized Black Lives Matter banner from a date in January preceding the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. birthday observance and continuing through the February observance of Black History Month 
And the uh, fourth recommendation, and this, this flows from the discussion at town meeting was continuing your public comment about what other steps Arlington could take to reflect the spirit of these actions. So those are the four recommendations. There are a number of considerations that we incorporated into the memorandum, which in include the relative impact on regularly recurring displays versus a perpetual display, the shared nature of public space such as town hall, and, and um, significantly, if there is going to be a banner on town hall, the requirement that we clearly distinguish any messaging as government speech. So I'm gonna offer the, the four recommendations as votes before the board and, and uh, open it up for discussion uh, through you, Mr. Chair. Right. And thank you. And I should have mentioned this before. I, I did want to just apologize. And I, I take responsibility for this as the chair to, to the board and the public. You know, this is a discussion that this issue, I think, you know, took on a life of its own because of the vote that we took in September. This is a discussion that we should have had parallel with the vote that we took in September. And we just, you know, I didn't never got around to doing that in our September meeting when, when we took the vote to remove the, the banner. It was always the our intention that we'd have the banner up and then have a plan in place when we took that vote in September, it just for a number of reasons didn't happen. And I think it would be a much easier process if, if we had do that, if we had done that. So I just do want to to mention that. Um, with that, I will look to the board for any comments. Um, Mr. Diggins. Yes, well, I mean, I appreciate I mean, your apology, but it, I, I, I think it's unwarranted because the, because it's to figure out what to do next is going to take a while. It, uh, it figuring out I mean, how we w want to display where we want to display. I mean, it's going to take a while. I mean, uh, and interestingly, when I was doing some research on behalf of the Rainbow Coalition, I was going through uh, the websites for all of the towns and municipalities in, uh, in Massachusetts. And there were a couple that had like uh, sign committees and one that actually had a banner committee. You know, I don't have the, I don't have that town marked down yet, but, but I mean, I think, um, I mean, it, it may require me something on that level, you know, to figure out what we're going to do I mean, about banners I mean, of any type I mean, and, and how we use public property you know, um, for um, display of them. You know. um, and so um, it, it, there, there is a little um, ambiguity, I think, I mean, on the third one, I, the third point, let me go back over to that window. Um, so for um, the display of the banner we, from MLK Day in, uh, through February, uh, through you, Mr. Chair, where are we planning on putting it? Well, that's certainly a discussion that we're here to have. Okay. Mr. Corsi, did you have a- I, I, I did. For the, so for the period between Martin Luther King Day and the end of um, February, the recommendation is to display the banner at Town Hall. Oh, you know, but, and, but again, it's open to discussion right. uh, before the board, but that was what uh, Mr. Kiro and I had to, had discussed, but open it up for a full board discussion. Right. You know, and, well, and so may I continue, Mr. Chair? Yes. You know, so we, I, be my position on that hasn't changed, you know, and and so and and I, I think I mean, there is no reason to think I me mean, that we won't find ourselves in a situation similar to where we were uh, in uh, in the last year I mean, in in, the, in September because uh, one of the things that happened is that events going on outside of the town it uh, would coincide I me mean, with the date that we had decided to bring the banner down and, and it then looked like we were in conceding I me mean, to these other events I mean and not uh, by by taking the banner down to clarify that point when we vote on the policy we will not have to take it another vote to put it up and put it down so our vote that we take to solidify 
when and where the banner would hang would be enough guidance for the town manager to know when to display it. So there wouldn't be a subsequent vote in February or in January regarding the banner. So, so then question to you, Mr. Chair, is then, then how does that differ from what was deter was, was um, voted on last time? Because we, we didn't have a policy in place and the town manager or attorney Heim, correct me if I'm wrong, but what we are trying, we're essentially taking the votes that we took last June and the vote, votes that we took last September and consolidating them into one vote that we take right now and it stays in perpetuity until the board takes another vote to change that policy. Attorney Heim? So, I mean, I think there's a couple of different facets of the policy of what's being proposed. One facet is when and where uh, a specific banner, Black Lives Matter banner, will be displayed in Arlington that's a representative of the select board's um, government speech. The second piece of it is, uh, I think, a call to uh, revise, and Mr. DeCourcy can correct me, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but revise the overall um, current banner policies so that to my, I guess, my anticipation, we're distinguishing between the town's traditional use of banners uh, to advertise a specific event or cultural, you know, occurrence uh, with contrast to that with something that is more of a government speech function on behalf of the select board representing the values of the town of Burlington. I don't want to speak for Mr. Cure or Mr. DeCourcy, but that's what I anticipate uh, would come out of at least two of the points that Mr. DeCourcy discussed. Right. That, that's, that's right. Mm -hmm. And, and I think but what I think the, the answer to your question is, is, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, but we take a vote, we can take a vote right now that says that we, the select board of the town of Arlington, vote to display, and I, I think what Mr. Corsi is saying is that the date that we actually put it up before Martin Luther King, when Mr. Carl comes back, we'll come back and we'll designate a specific date, but we'll take a vote to display the Black Lives Matter banner on town hall from this date to this date each year until we vote otherwise. So with that, we don't need to go in, in, a, Jan, in a January meeting each year to vote to put the sign up and we don't need to vote to take the sign down at the end of February. This is we're giving the town manager guidance as to when and where to put it up each year and when and where to put to take the sign down. And, and I'll just make one point and a follow up and then stop and let someone else have the floor. Um, so uh, I mean, I'm still not in favor of town hall. I mean, I prefer some other location. But my concern about the, this notion the, that we're setting a policy and that's how it's going to be is that we can change things when we want me and my understanding was that we had a up and down date we determined before me and there was pressure to extend things and we did it uh and i have no confidence me that that uh it won't happen again it uh, uh and so uh that would on top of my just not wanting anything on town hall you know, I just have no confidence in me that that we would stick to it, you know, because the pressures will come back, you know, so that's it. Thank you. All right, Mrs. Mahan. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I agree with Mr. Diggins. Um, up until this most current conversation, the only banners displayed at Town Hall were uh, announcing Town Day. So sort of a informative um, community event um, display, as well as the, I'm not going to remember it right, I'm, I'm thinking the Strawberry Festival that the high school um, music department puts on, and, and that was it. Um, and I also want to state that um, I do, when we started this last April, the town manager um, 
represented the Human Rights Commission um, to put up the Black Lives Matter banner uh, on the heels of George Floyd and many other um, black men and women um, who've been killed uh, to put that on town hall. And the original presentation to this board was that Human Rights Commission was asking us just for the month of April, which normally we would put pride banners up and down Mass Ave, um, as well as that's another thing, that's a third entity that we would put on the town hall. So um, we didn't put up the pride banner, we put up Black Lives Matter banner. And the Human Rights Commission through the town manager indicated that in May, they would come back with um, a recommendation of where and in what way to display the Black Lives Matter banner that was on town hall somewhere else in Arlington. It may not be the banner, it may be something else. Then they capitulated on that and said, we need more time. Can you give us till June? And so we waited till June and then June came and then a petition started and then Human Rights Commission changed to say, no, now we wanna say, keep it up there. Um, keep it up at least until we have the August hearing with, with the police issue um, for the community forum discussion. And I agree with Mr. Diggins. I don't know why we keep going back to this. I have no problem with um, up and down Mass Ave, not just in the center. Why not in East Arlington, the Heights, Black Lives Matter and other um, displays. But um, again, you know, we're, we're setting a, a, a process, we're setting a, a precedent in terms of that. Uh, to me, banners at town hall aren't something that town hall should have a banner 12 months out of the year. And, and, and I'm not diminishing the message of Black Lives Matter. Um, I, I, I would ask, so I, I'm not in favor of uh, the second part of uh, the motion, the initial one regarding a Black Lives Matter banner at town hall. Um, Definitely it displayed throughout the town, not just the center, um, on the uh, banners that we have that go up and down Mass Ave. But if I could, and again, I really am upset about the fact that the way this was initially presented um, by the town manager, but basically by the Human Rights Commission, uh, totally took a 180 on this and, and, and got us down there. Um, I, I would want to ask uh, Mr. DeCourcy on the second part of the four considerations that you have before us, um, would you be amenable to uh, customization of any Black Lives Matter banner with the seal of the town and or any additional language clarifying this as a statement of values rather than an endorsement of, particular, of a particular organization? And I say that so that my and Mr. Diggins um, feelings regarding the banner, that it's an and or, because uh, I know that um, the town has adopted, um, including myself and others, that mm -hmm. we um, have issued a statement that uh, we send out on our, our town communication that says Arlington values, equity, diversity, and inclusion. We are committed to building a community where everyone is heard respected and protected. Um, so um, I, I just would ask for the and or in there. And because uh, I, I, I would need to have more uh, input regarding changing our town seal to recognize Black Lives Matter because, you know, with all due respect, just coming from my own personal um, family um, issues, mm -hmm. um, if we're gonna open up the town seal, I certainly wanna open, open it up to uh, disabled, severely autistic and other individuals who I feel for many, many years um, have been overlooked. So I, I guess as a friendly amendment to Mrs. Just Corsi- to clarify, get to and or. So I, I don't think the recommendation is to amend the town seal. It's, it, it's a brainstorm as to what a new banner would look like and it would be a banner with the town seal with a statement of value and you know I, I think a number of times I've, we've had conversations with someone 
with uh, I've had conversations with a few people where it would be something along the lines of Arlington affirms that Black Lives Matter. It has a way to different to to make it clear that it's a statement of value on behalf of the town rather than any association with any specific group. But I'll let Mr. Corsi correct me. No, that's right. And 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 you know two things. One. Again, this, and we've been discussing this for a long time. This is an attempt on Mr. Kira's part and my part to bring something back before the board, because frankly, as Mr. Hurd said, nothing has been brought back in terms of what our plan is. And when I say nothing, we haven't developed a, a, a plan. So this is in response to the discussions that took place over the summer, the discussions that took place in the fall, and and the uh, the Warren article hearing on the resolution and the actual vote of, of town meeting um, and, and it is not a proposal for a permanent sign at town hall. And, and that's one thing that within the memo itself, there is this discussion about the impact of recurring displays versus perpetual displays. And, and my feeling is that that's it, it, at a certain point in time and, and here between the Martin Luther King Jr. birthday and, and the end of February, that would be the time if we are going to put up the banner, that would be the time to do it and a time to reflect what actions we've taken as a community um, over the past year, where we still need to go as a community and, and, and to, to move forward. So I, I just wanna be clear, it's not, and this is, again, it's for discussion before the full board. So I'm not gonna, I, but it, it's not something that there is a proposal to, to do something um, permanently. As, as to the friendly amendment, we had a discussion whether the town seal or additional language in addition to the town seal. I note that there are two other communities that have a Black Lives Matter banner on their city halls. Both of them have their city seals. That's the precedent. The precedent for the additional language is the Black Lives Matter banner or the two of them that are in front of Arlington High School that say we believe Black Lives Matter. Um, I don't have a problem with the and or, but it's, it's Mr. Hurd said this isn't an attempt to change the town seal. It's just distinguish this as, as government speech. And we had heard from attorney Heim previously on that um, in terms of what is government speech and, and what um, the implications of that are. So um, I, I just want to try to be clear uh, on, on those two points. Okay, and, and through you, Mr. Chair, to that, I'm just looking at if we vote, if we vote to move receipt, of this um, correspondence from our colleagues, Mr. Securo, Mr. DeCourcy, I'm fine with that. But if we vote the four um, recommendations that we're being asked to consider, someone could hold us to that language that says, you say in here uh, about changing the town seal, about having a Black Lives Matter banner on town hall for two months, starting at the first week of January to the end of February. So. Um, if um, we're, we're going to move to receive this and, and continue on uh, either through Mr. DeCourcy, Mr. Carroll, or two other board members to make some suggestions in the future. I'm, I'm just thinking that the role that we got down here, if we out and out vote these four um, bulleted items uh, that are under consideration, we are committing to some of the things that I'm hearing. We're saying, no, we're not committing to that in terms of changing the sound, town seal, having a banner on town hall, whether for uh, two days or two months. Um, so I guess I would ask Mr. DeCourcy um, and or any of my other colleagues, what is your preference on the vote that should go before us? If it's move or seat, I'm fine with that. But if it's something else, I'd like to hear about. I, I, Mr. Chairman, if I could just respond just yep. to the seal. I did, and again, I want to reiterate, there is no recommendation to change the town seal. And, 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 and what that language was, and, and you know, maybe it's not clear enough, is, is that if we do have a new, if we do have a banner, regardless of where it is in town, that the town of Arlington seal is on it. It's not incorporating that as, as the official seal. It's taking our existing seal. As far as, I mean, this is a lot to put before the board this evening. Not all of us are here tonight. And, and I think given given the comments, I think, um, you know, maybe, maybe receipt is, is, is all, all that, um, that that we should be doing this evening because I, I don't think, um, you know, without, without all five members, without 
for the time to maybe take a look at this. It's it's that that's um, the best way for us to go for purposes of tonight. I would second that. So, yeah, I, I'm not making it as a motion. But okay. I, you know, if you want to move move receipt, right, I I'll, move, I'll move receipt. So I just want to I'll step in and just clarify what I feel we are doing here, what we should be doing here is. You know, we've had many, many discussions on this. We've had a ton of public input. We've had the town and around the fall, it became time to come up with a permanent plan for the banner in response to the consistent public input that we've had. We, at that time, I think made a decision that we wanted to go through our special town meeting, let them weigh in on the subject. Then we would consider the vote of town meeting. It's certainly, you know, this is within the purview of the select board, but we consider that vote among a number of other competing aspects of the, this situation that we had to consider. Um, and I think it's incumbent upon us now to come up with a plan. And I agree that Without Mr. De without Mr. Curl here, it may be wise to push this to another to the next meeting. But I I don't think we're, this isn't certainly isn't something that I would like to, particularly with the time frames and where we are in the year, that I would like to push out in perpetuity. I think we, this is something that we would come up with and resolve at our next meeting, if if not tonight. And, you know, I, I, again, we've had a lot of public input. We've had a lot of vocal public input at our meetings, people that wanted the banner to remain. We've had, I, I know everyone has had public input from people that have called them privately and said that they don't want the banner on town hall for various reasons. Some people disagree with the message of the banner. Some people just, again, don't like to see banners on town hall, as Mr. Diggins has said many times. But, but we have had, I think, enough between the town meeting and the input that we've received, enough to come to a consensus that there are a lot of residents in town that would like to see us take action and have a, some sort of a permanent policy where we, we could display the banner and come, if not on town hall, then come up with Another way that we could that we could push for the statement of Black Lives Matter, and you know, I think this is something that we do need to take up and we need to resolve, and so we can move forward, and we can continue with the community conversations and all the work that we've done in the past few years. Um, so I personally, I, I am fine with the recommendations. I am t fine with the with the time frame that has been suggested by Mr. Corsi and Mr. Curl. Um, and I think we can come up with a sign that accomplishes all of our goals and supports the policy statement that we have all five of us and the town staff have re reiterated many times over the, the, the past few years that we're reviewing racial injustice in institutional, structural, and personal race in individual racism that still exists in town. And it's something that we need to keep working at. And that, that's, you know, what we're trying to do here. Um, so I, I, I had, as a, I mean, I don't know if it's right now for where the, the, the discussions are going, but you know, I, I th think that the the limited period suggested by Mr. DeCourcy and Mr. Carl is fine. I did want to just put before the bo board for thought. Now I'm going to attempt to screen share. So hopefully I don't have any embarrassing <laughs> private information that's about to go public. But you don't have it I, anyway, so we don't have to worry about that. You know, just show um, us your. Let me see if I. Just want to make sure that this is up. Just something for consideration. This is, and can you see this? Can you see the photo? Mm -hmm. 
Did I do it appropriately? Yeah. So this is a flagpole that's in the Winchester Town Common. So just for consideration as we move forward with the decision, if we did want to have a you know statement of values somewhere in town, we do have a flagpole at, pole at Uncle Sam Plaza. So it's, it is something to consider what our, that our, our neighboring town is doing. So it's the flag, there's a Black Lives Matter sign, and then there's a rainbow flag right below it that I assume they they're flying indefinitely. So I just wanted, again, you know, we're not, doesn't look like we're going to have a motion on, the, on this at this particular meeting, but just as we consider where we go and how we can best you know, solidify our, our values regarding these issues to residents and the public that pass through Arlington, I, I think this is one idea that, that we could take a look at. Mr. Mr. Chair, may I offer something? Yes. I'm, I'm mindful of the fact that it's not my place to weigh in on the substantive debate. Um, but th there's one thing that I want to note with respect to this question about the town seal. Um, and, and maybe this is mostly for public education rather than for the board's edification. The, the, under the law for a long time, if you had a process like the board had where you put up a sign or a banner or a flag. Um, the idea was that this is sort of neutral space and anybody who's applying gets to put it up. And it created this tension where it's like, if we allow any types of flags or banners or signs, then we have to allow all of them, right? If we put up a sign, you know, uh, you know in the city of Boston uh, case, the shirt left case, the question became, uh, somewhat similar to the picture you just showed, Mr. Hurd, uh, the city of Boston flies the city of Boston flag, the United States flag, and then it has a third flag pole in City Hall Plaza that sometimes it swaps out for various different things. Sometimes it raises flags of other uh, nations to celebrate cultural and, uh, culture and heritage of specific um, uh, uh, folks. Sometimes it raises uh, flags that, uh, like a rainbow flag. Sometimes it has, raises flags that have a more distinct and discreet message. Um, and the uh, plaintiffs in that case wanted the city of Boston to raise basically a flag affirming Christian values. And they, they, they did this under the pretense that you were applying to put our flag up too and you can't say no because you put all these other flags up. And what the first circuit decided, and this was only relatively recently in 2019, was that the government gets to engage in speech and the government gets to say that we have some messages as a government because if we allow all messages, then we have no message as elected leaders. And without advocating a position as to what the board should do, the idea behind it, having the town seal or some other imprimatur of the board's authority is to make a distinction between saying, here's something that the board is just saying, you know, somebody applied to put up this event sign, we're, you know, find it meets our criteria and we're advertising the Arlington Arts Festival or the Feast of the East versus this is something that the select board is saying is a statement on behalf of the select board and it has the town seal or some other form of making it clear that this is distinguished from the speech that somebody else may be trying to engage in on government property. And I just wanna make that clear for the public because that's sort of what we're talking about, whether the town seal is the right idea or not the right idea. The idea is, is to make it clear that this is when the government is speaking. This is when the select board is speaking as opposed to this is when the select board said, okay, you checked all the boxes, we get to put up, uh, you know, uh, the, you know, a 5k run for, for a different cause, you know, banners uh, uh, throughout town. So I, I hope that's somewhat helpful in terms of setting the table for future discussions, even if it's just helpful for the public's understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, um, thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, um, uh, Mr. Hyde. That was helpful, you know, and 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 I, I understand it, it uh, and I, I support it. And I just want to prepare us though that when we do that, hey, we're going to have some explaining to do, hey, because I think for a lot of people, uh, that subtlety is going to be missed. I mean, and it's going to be uh, interpreted in ways that we aren't going to find favorable. I'm fine with doing it, but just be prepared. Me that we're we're gonna have to uh, do some explaining to people, and and hopefully it'll get through to those who 
have open ears. I mean, I suspect there'll be those who don't have open ears and we'll just never get through, but that's okay. You know, I, I would like it that when we d deal with them, that we break these break these up in the four and maybe have four votes. And, um, I'm easily in favor of one and four. And, and I also want to encourage us, you know, to to be willing to spend some time uh, uh, dealing with one. And, uh, four is 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 a long going um, process as well as should be. And, uh, 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 but with one, I mean, sometimes when we're trying to I mean, come up with policy, we, we try to do it fast I mean, and because we just want to get it done. But let's be prepared to spend some time with it and, and, and engage the community on it. Uh, I liked your idea, uh, Mr. Hurd, I mean, uh, uh, with respect to the flag. I mean, uh, I'm glad, glad to see us thinking kind of uh, more prominent places because be one of my ideas was to maybe have you know black light what similarly to the way that we do the pride of uh, stripes being a crosswalk in front of Tal Hall, we could do maybe Black Lives Matter in um in, in the crosswalk. Maybe a little bolder for me and maybe even a conjunction was to take the banner and maybe string it in across the major intersection of Pleasant Street and, um, and, and Mass Ave. Just something really bold, uh, really big uh, out there uh, so that uh, more people will see it. Uh, so, uh, but, so uh, let's spend some time on these things, uh, and, 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 and once again, I'll suggest that we, we separate them up and, Vote on this long of vote, but I think it'll allow us to maybe make our points a little more clearly amongst each other and to the public. Thank you. All right, and that's certainly fine. I mean, I, I don't know that there's a much other than vote to commit to number four. Um, number one, I think we we can separate out as a separate agenda item and and just discuss what the process would be, and then. Two and three, I think, are really one item that you could consolidate once we come back to try to figure out what we're going to do on those two items. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Any additional comments? We have a motion to receive by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Yes. That sound right? Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if I did, but I will second. So. <laughs> Mr. Chair, are you ready? Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's a unanimous vote. Thank you. All right. So we, before we go into executive session, we have new business. So Attorney Heim. You are muted. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do, I do have one brief bit of new business. Um, I received a, a, a terrific news from uh, Representative Garbley today. He called and let me know that the, uh, well, if other folks are gonna speak to this, I'll just be quiet. <laughs> no, go ahead. Oh, okay. Uh, he called and let me know that the uh, senior uh, means tested tax relief had passed through the House and he's keeping a close eye on the Senate, but it's uh, expected to, to pass because if it doesn't, it's, it's got to come back again next session. So um, that's great news uh, for uh, seeing through what started with this board's initiative to provide uh, seniors in Arlington um, with uh, some means tested tax relief. I'm grateful to uh, obviously our legislative delegation, uh, but also their staff who alongside with Senate and House Council have worked on some tweaks to the legislation that were uh, necessary from the Department of Revenue standpoint. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I just have one piece I'll share, um, and it's very good news. Uh, our local health department has partnered with the health departments in Lexington, Belmont, and Watertown to collectively be able to distribute vaccine to first responders. So starting next week with Arlington as the lead, we will be setting up clinics and we'll start providing vaccines to our police officers, firefighters, and public safety dispatchers. So collectively, 
uh, over that week's time. Uh, we'll hopefully be vaccinating uh, 580 employees across all four of those towns. Uh, so I know it's been long awaited, but uh, officially next week we will begin start, uh, starting to vaccinate our tier one or our phase one employees. So I think that's very positive news for the community. Excellent, that is good news. All right, Mrs. Mahan. Um, I, I just want to thank town council for bringing up um, the uh, means tested se se senior citizen property tax exemption. Um, from what attorney Heim sent, said, I'm hearing the same thing in terms of the house and Senate. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that uh, the governor signs it. Um, I would have one question on the town manager um, regarding his new business. Is this um, regional uh, vaccination program with Arlington and other communities, is that something that we're doing within our own framework or is that something we're doing in concert with the um, State Department of Public Health that provides a program as long as you're vaccinating at least 200 employees and more, they can give you some resources. So it's that program that you just mentioned in coordination with the DPH. So the, the reason that we are partnering is to get to that qualifying level where they will provide you with vaccine. Okay, and I definitely want to com commend our town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine and Christine Conley, our um, Director of Health and Human Services for um, getting that up and running really with very little notice, let alone a, a designated matrix or framework to do that. And I just would look forward to I might be too ambitious at the next meeting, but um, the second part of the governor's press conference today spoke to um, mass sites where the next tier of individuals um, could go uh, to be vaccinated. So um, I'm glad we have this inroad with the state uh, program that is provided for our first responders um, who are willing to take it. None of this is mandatory. Um, so I definitely feel comfortable that um, Arlington is also uh, placing itself to take advantage of the second launch, um, which will be, I think I miss it by a year or two. <laughs> I'm, I'm a little too old and I'm too, a little too young to get in for senior hours. I'm stuck in that 55 to 60 range, but um, um, I'm, I, I really am appreciative of the fact that um, our town officials starting with the town manager are really staying on top of um, what the state is providing through the Department of Public Health, through the command center, through MIIS and all the other acronyms um, and just finding a way to take advantage of that, not only state, but, but federal funding. And my last new business would be to ask attorney Hein when one of us makes a motion to go into executive session tonight to conduct strategy with respect to a pending litigation, the second half of that motion I'm asking is, would it be, and when the board comes out of executive session, it will be to adjourn, or when the board comes out of executive session, it will be to take a vote and then adjourn? Uh, you can, uh, uh, thank you, Ms. Ms. Mahan. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, we can adjourn in executive session. So as long as it's, it's, it's broadcast that we're not coming back in open session, um, we can, that should be part of the entry motion. Thank you, Attorney Hyman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just, my head wasn't figuring out where to go there. No, no, no further new business. Thank you. Mr. Dickens. Uh, two, two quickies. You know, I, uh, I took a walk down um, Sunnyside Avenue um, yesterday, deep down the street, and all of it was on the sidewalk, you know, which is the first time I've done that. Usually I have to walk in the street a bit because it didn't have a uh, good sidewalk. They did a good job. And, uh, uh, so thanks to DBW on that. And this is legit new business. Uh, that is for next meeting. Um, I would like to um, have on the agenda a uh, discussion about uh, a desire on my part to put in a uh, article uh, to create a committee to study uh, how we go about creating a youth and young adult advisory committee. And so um, please, please um, do that for me. Okay. Thanks. We'll coordinate with Attorney Heim for that. Thanks. Mr. DeCorsi. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just very briefly, and, and just something, is actually since COVID, I mean, we, uh, 
one of my walking paths takes me through Monotomy Rocks Park and um, Hills Pond. And I, I saw something yesterday that while nothing um, nothing bad happened, it, it, it was a little bit scary that there's some people out in the ice um, there. And it's it's a real danger right now. And, and the police department tweeted about that yesterday. Um, and, and Hills Hill might be the, Hills Pond might be the only pond that has some ice on it right now. It doesn't have it near the edges, but if you see somebody out there, please warn them because it has not been cold enough to support to support that type of use. And I appreciate the police department putting that that warning out to people because it's just a you know few few days with slightly below freezing temperatures when it goes above freezing, um, it, it's it's not a good situation. So um, just just a, something that we saw by the time we came around the pond, the people were off. But it was it it just is um it's that time of year where. The, the ice may look like it's it's good. It isn't, and, and please stay off it. That's all I have. It was just something that really struck me. Yes, and I was glad nothing happened. Well, I learned to skate so fast on Spy Pond when you skate, and all of a sudden you hear the, the ice crack below you. Not not to make, make light of a serious situation. But... All right. No new business for me. Um, so with that, so for our next... The next item on our agenda, we have an executive session for the purpose of conducting a strategy session with respect to impending litigation, a public discussion of which would be detrimental to the town's position. Before we entertain a motion to such effect, I note that upon the advice of counsel, providing detail on the subject of this executive session would be itself detrimental to the board's discussion of its posture and the town's ultimate position. And further that unless otherwise moved by a member of the board, we will adjourn this meeting from our executive session and shall not return to open session. With that, is there a motion to enter ex executive session on such terms and to adjourn the meeting from executive session? Mrs. Mahan. So moved. Mr. Gorsi. Second. All right, any comments, Mr. Diggins? No comments, thank you. And with that, Attorney Hyde. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Thank you.